This video is called The Court System, and we're going to be exploring the difference between criminal and civil court, and also federal and state court. So first off, the difference between criminal and civil courts. Civil court is the type of court you go to when you sue somebody or you're getting sued. Civil court deals with disagreements. And a good way to remember civil court is you would never see somebody get arrested and put in handcuffs and then brought to a civil court to solve the outcome of that. You wouldn't get arrested for this. This would be the kind of court you go to if there was a disagreement over a boundary or if you accidentally hit somebody's car and they wanted you to pay for the damages, that kind of thing. So in a civil case, the, the case is actually started by somebody called the plaintiff and then they would sue the person called the defendant. The civil court doesn't involve the police. And the right to a jury is typically given up in a civil court, and the judge will decide um, the outcome, not only who's guilty and who's innocent, but also the penalty given. A good example, although a little bit silly, if you're home from school sick, and it's like one in the afternoon and you're flipping through the TV hoping to find something to watch, you might have seen an episode of Judge Judy. That is an example of civil court. She's dealing with civil disputes between people, and she's determining the outcome of those disputes. The more uh, common, uh, not common type of court, but the, probably the, the court that you think of in your mind when you think of court is that there's the judge, and then there's the jury, and they decide the guilt and innocence, and that's called a criminal court. So if you've committed a crime, and you've been arrested by the police, you would appear in criminal court to determine your guilt and also your punishment. So here are some things that would be decided in criminal court, theft, murder, arson, other crimes, assault. The government runs this type of case for the victim of a criminal court. So if you were assaulted, you wouldn't have to sue the person that assaulted you to get them to go to court. They were arrested and then the government would take care of um, prosecuting that person. The defendant, however, so if you were the one that did the assault or were accused of doing the assaulting, you would hire a lawyer um, or you would be appointed one, so you're entitled the right to a defense. And in this type of court, the jury decides guilt and punishment. So I think it's clear to see here that if you break a law, you go to criminal court. If there's a disagreement that you might have to owe somebody some money for whatever reason, then you would go to a civil court. And that's pretty simple to understand. It does get a little bit more complex when we get to this side of the scale, federal versus state court. So first of all, Let's talk about federal court. You go to a federal court if you break a federal law or are having a disagreement about a federal issue. So back, remember, federalism, topic one in this unit. I know it was three topics ago and you already took your quiz on it, but hopefully you still remember it when you had your Venn diagram and on one side was the job of what the national government did and on the other side was the state government. Well, this is a good way to think about federal court as well. Since the national government deals with the post office, it was on the left side of the Venn diagram, a crime against the post office, something like stealing mail, uh, pretending to be somebody you aren't in the mail, or theft of the, theft of the post office, like physically breaking in, would go to a federal court, since mail is a federal job. Pretty, makes pretty good sense. Also, since the national or federal government deals with counterfeiting money, they're in charge of printing money and they're in charge of punishing counterfeiters, if you were to counterfeit money, you would go to a federal court. Um, there are federal courts in every state. We have three of them in Connecticut. There's one in Hartford, New Haven, and Bridgeport. Here's a little picture of the one in Hartford. So that even though it's a federal court, they exist all over the country because people go to federal court all the time if they break a federal law or they have a disagreement about a federal law. The other type of court is called sta a state court. And as you can imagine, you go to state court if you break a state law. So, for example, if you drive drunk, you would go to a state court because it is the state's job to protect public safety. So they make the law about drunk driving. So if you are arrested for drunk driving, you go to a state court. In a similar fashion, it is the state's job to conduct elections. So if you were to go to an election site and steal ballots or tamper with the election or try to do some kind of fraud, you would go to a state court for that because the state is in charge of the election. We have state courts um, all over the state, obviously. They're more common than the federal courts. And we have one right down the street from our school in Rockville. There's, this is a state civil court, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. Across the street is another court, and I believe that one is the state 
criminal court. I could have had them confused, but there's two, one across the street from each other. One is criminal and one is civil. So similarly, we also have a federal criminal court and a federal civil court. Now, to make matters a little bit more complex, not too much more complex, but a little bit more complex, um, state and federal courts have different levels. So most trials in most cases start at a low level court called a court of original jurisdiction. Original jurisdiction just means the first court that hears a case, but usually your case starts like at the most basic type of court, um, like the one in Rockville, just this regular old courthouse, the local courthouse that's close nearby. This is where most cases start and where most cases end. In some instances, however, the outcome in the original jurisdiction court is challenged because maybe the person that was on trial didn't think they got a very, a very fair trial. The court would the case would then get appealed and it could be heard a second time by what's called an appellate court or an appeals court. The ruling of the court of original jurisdiction is challenged, then it would go to this higher level court and this court could reverse the decision of the original jurisdiction court if they felt it was necessary. In very rare circumstances, the case might go from the original jurisdiction court to the appeals court to an even higher court called the Supreme Court. And there's a state Supreme Court and a federal Supreme Court. And in both courts, it's the highest one in that particular system. And only certain cases reach this level. It has to deal with um, a certain thing. And this is the final court. If you get to the Supreme Court, you can't challenge their ruling. That's the, that's the end of the line if, you, if your case were to get that far. So let's talk about Supreme Court a little bit to finish this video. We're not going to talk about the, the state Supreme Court because every state has a different type of Supreme Court. Let's look at the U.S. Supreme Court because that's the, the head honcho, the top dog, if you will, the highest, most powerful court in the entire country. The Supreme Court is made up of nine justices. They serve on the Supreme Court for life. So once you become a justice, you can serve until you just decide you don't want to anymore and you retire. If you die while there, obviously you're not serving anymore. And in some rare cases, if you were to commit a crime, you could get um, removed from your job. But it's very rare. Usually they serve for their entire life once they're appointed. These justices are appointed by the president. It's his job as chief executive to make these appointments. And the appointment has to be approved by Congress. So there's kind of a check and balance there where the president can appoint whoever he wants to these positions, but Congress has to say okay on it. They can veto his appointment. And the Supreme Court, this is the big one right here. So if you're going to pay attention to anything on this slide, this would be the one that I want you to, to pay attention to. The Supreme Court only hears cases that deal with constitutionality. So the question in the, in the court has to be, is this allowed by the Constitution or not? And then it could go to the Supreme Court. Many people just think that because it's the most powerful court, they'll deal with the worst crimes. Like if somebody was brutally murdered, then it could go to the Supreme Court. Well, that's not the case. Um, they only deal with issues that deal with the Constitution. Almost all Supreme Court cases are heard on appeal. Very rarely will the Supreme Court start be the first, the original jurisdiction for a case. The only time that would ever happen if it was like Massachusetts suing Connecticut, then maybe the Supreme Court would start um, because it's states suing each other. But other than that, it usually starts in a, a smaller court and works its way up to an appeals court and then would come to the Supreme Court as like the third, sometimes the fourth court that might hear a case. And what the Supreme Court does is they answer questions about the Constitution. There's various famous Supreme Court cases. The most famous one, or one of the more famous ones, being in the 50s, Brown versus Board of Education, where some people sued, saying that, um, so actually some black students sued, saying that segregated schools shouldn't be allowed. It's, it's actually against the Constitution and the 14th Amendment. And that case went all the way up the, the chain, and it finally got heard by the Supreme Court because it dealt with the Constitution. And then the Supreme Court said, no, that isn't allowed by the Constitution. And that's why in the South, black and white students eventually went to school in the same school because segregated schools were ruled as unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. 